Imagine being involved with a project that you've decided to nurture since day one. A project that you've put blood, sweat, tears, and possibly other bodily fluids into. A project that you work your ass off every single day of your life throughout its creation. Imagine that you have others with you who share that same passion and drive, that same push to want to make this creation the best it can be. And by and large, it seems like you're succeeding. Then imagine that out of that large group of creative people, you get one guy who happens to be the mouthpiece of your team, who then goes on to not only embarrass you, your team, and the work you've done, but the entire brand and franchise that you've been working your ass off to bring to life. In my mind, that's what Randy Pitchford has done to Gearbox Software. My channel is more of a playground for Halo-themed content, but first and foremost, I am someone who plays and enjoys games as a hobby. I've done so for as long as I can remember, and I'll be doing it for many years to come. In that time, I've interacted with people who I've gained and lost respect for, read into controversy that has altered my opinion from positive to negative, or vice versa, and in some cases, put me off a single product entirely. If you're not aware, Randy Pitchford is the CEO of Gearbox Software, a development company based in Frisco, Texas. Over the years, Gearbox has had a steady release of original games either published under the brand or developed internally. Some of their achievements include their early work on ports for Half-Life, Halo, original titles like Brothers in Arms, and of course, Borderlands, which I like a lot. I'm pointing these achievements out because all it took was one guy and a series of constantly embarrassing events to put me off wanting to ever touch a Gearbox game again. In more recent years, Gearbox has had a problem that I can only refer to as the Pitchford problem. Because no matter what height this company reaches, Pitchford seems hell-bent on screwing it up somehow. I first became aware of Gearbox through Borderlands, but it wasn't until I was introduced to the promotional material for Aliens Colonial Marines that I started paying attention. Alien is a movie franchise that I've been in love with for years, and I consider the sequel Aliens to be the best movie. So Colonial Marines seemed and looked very promising to me. And that's when I was introduced to Randy Pitchford through promotional materials in which he took center stage, talking about how passionate he and his team were. I don't doubt their passion, but Colonial Marines released in such a shocking state that it followed Gearbox around like a bad smell for years. And that, for me at least, was when the Pitchford problem began. I'm seeing evidence to suggest that it started long before, but I'm talking about my experience here. Randy Pitchford looked at critics, reviews, comments, complaints, and any other form of feedback to Colonial Marines with a cheap smile and seemingly brushed everything off. Defending the game's qualities any chance that he could. I get it, I really do. Nobody wants to be told that their work is bad. It's, it's hard being criticized in any capacity. But Pitchford's defense of Colonial Marines had nothing to do with that. It was blatant delusion on his part to say that this game launched in a state that people could be satisfied with. He also went as far as to retweet overly positive tweets about Colonial Marines, and that's not a big deal to me, I mean, you know? But then you check out some of these accounts, and since being used to post these tweets to Pitchford, and presumably other Gearbox employees, they've been mysteriously left abandoned, almost as if they were made for the purpose of flimsily promoting a bad game. Other people did point this out to him, but if I recall correctly, his response was either silence or to just block people. It was broadcast to a wider audience when YouTubers like Yong Ye and Jim Sterling pointed it out, and this is where it became much, much worse. There was a point in time where Pitchford had direct contact with Jim Sterling prior to the release of Colonial Marines, where he spoke about the game's quality and assurance that the finished product would be a love letter to the fans. Jim Sterling maintains to this day that Pitchford flat out lied to his face and refers to him as nothing more than a snake oil salesman for telling all sorts of rubbish to himself, the media, and paying customers. Pitchford took it one step further years later when, in an interview with Ryan McCaffrey of IGN, he once again avoided the well-deserved criticism by stating that expectation management was the problem. The problem is always expectation management, and we didn't even know what the hell we were doing yet. We hadn't even written the first line of code. Yeah. And now people already designed the game they wanted in their own heads. I think one, I think there was a couple things. One, it was probably one of those seven and a half kind of games that came out right after we did Borderlands. And so everybody wanted a nine. It had all this expectation. It's one of those expectation management things. So if you, if you want a nine and you expect a nine and you give people a seven, then they give you a five. Motherfucker. And basically what he means here is that Aliens Colonial Marines wasn't bad. It's that Borderlands was just too good. And because of that, people were expecting top tier quality. No, Randy, no, we were not. We were expecting something playable. We expected the same level of atmosphere from the promotional material that you plastered your face and voice into. We expected the enemy AI to have the intelligence necessary to be a considerable threat rather than a passable one. We expected something to wow us, and instead you sold us a lie. You gave us something that promotional material barely represented, and then years later, you tell us that it wasn't your fault, it was our expectations that caused the problem. I mean, really? Our expectations wrote that story? Our expectations caused your 
promotional material to look better? Our expectations were the issue and not internal problems at your studio? And of course, your attempt to be clever by conveniently forgetting the name of a man that bothered you so much that you described him as having a hard-on for you. Oh, what's the name of that guy? Um, he's the journalist guy. He's, his, his thing is he's always mad. He's, he's, um, he's a big dude. He's got a British accent. Can't, he's, a, he's got a hard-on for me. <laughs> I can't remember that guy. I'm not sure who you're talking about. He's a about. journalist, he's kind of big, he's got a British accent, and he's always angry. I played Colonial Marines. I played it multiple times, and I can easily say that I was sold something that was not even close to promotional material. The game was badly made. I'm sorry to discredit the hard work of people involved with the project, but the gameplay was dull, the AI was atrocious, graphically the game was okay, and I do give credit to the art teams for recreating locations from the movies like Hadley's Hope and The Derelict. The sound designs from the weapons, it's, it was so good. But the rest of the game, the story, the multiplayer, the voice acting, the overall pacing, it was all rubbish. It wasn't a good game, I'm sorry. His blatant dismissal of criticism, his childish description of Jim Sterling, his attitude towards people's reaction describing it as stupid shit solidified to me that this man is capable of doing two things well bullshitting and making his team look bad. I am no professional by any stretch. I have said and done stupid things, but when you're trying to sell a product to people and you describe their reaction to your product as stupid shit, and then personally attack people because of your inability to admit when your own shit stinks, that's when people rightfully lost respect for you and your brand is damaged as a whole. It sounds like I'm taking this personally, and to a degree I am. I was hyped for Colonial Marines. I'm a huge lover of the Alien universe. The idea that I could revisit those locations locations I thought were so interesting in the movies with the benefit of having it in a first person shooter setting was so inviting. And when the game finally came out, not only was it a slap in the face to paying customers, but it was also disrespecting the source material. At the end of the day, Colonial Marines was just a series of errors that manifested in what we were given at launch. In more recent times, Pitchford has taken the stage to showcase Gearbox games himself. I can't fault him for doing that. If I were the CEO, I would want to showcase the work that my team were doing. But a few weeks ago, Randy made the mistake of confirming that the recently announced Borderlands 3 would not feature microtransactions when it kind of does. And Game Informer went on to publish an article stating that fact. To clarify, Borderlands 3 features basically the same system that Borderlands 2 did when it came to microtransactions. It features skin packs cosmetics. But these do fall under the category of microtransactions and soon enough the internet was set ablaze with complaints towards Pitchford's words. Honestly, I was kind of on his side this time. The internet gamer frenzy came at him with such force because of a poor choice of words. And then he went and opened his mouth for real. I don't feel like he needed to apologize, but the man works in the game industry. He knows that there is negativity associated with the word microtransaction simply because of what it represents. He knows that people get touchy, testy, and vitriolic when it comes to this topic. Then again, this is also the CEO of a company that thought that partnering with key resellers like G2A was a good idea after apparently doing no research into them, making the late Total Biscuit do their job for them. In an ideal world, Pitchford would have corrected himself and said something like, hey guys, that's not what I meant, total word flub on my part, Borderlands 3 features the same level of microtransactions that Borderlands 2 had, cosmetics only, no loot box junk to be found, Hope that clears it up. He would probably get some anger directed at him, but the hatred would be far more idiotic in comparison to the guy who calmly explained the situation, blaming it on a word flop due to excitement. Anything would have been better than what he actually said. Come on guys, shitty clickbait headline. Literally seconds before I said that, I made it very clear we're gonna do more cosmetic stuff like we did in Borderlands 2. You know I was talking about premium currency and loot boxes kind of stuff not being in our game, which is reasonable confrontational, but reasonable. And then he continued. Why you guys would fuck me on this is beyond me. Thanks a lot. From there, Pitchford went on a Twitter meltdown, blocking, arguing, and in general making a bit of a tit of himself. And again, I get that it's difficult to hear criticism, and I get that it sucks when people say or do things the way that Game Informer did. But they were quite literally reporting exactly what he said. Your poor wording was not their fault. Now before this, Randy had been through a series of embarrassing blunders that we're not gonna get into here because this video has already dragged on long enough. But before I leave you, I did wanna bring up one more thing that I consider to be the worst, and that would be the alleged assault of David Eddings. If you're not familiar with that name, you are probably familiar with the voice. We're doing something very different than your average action shooter here with the- <laughs> Seriously? Your arm's tired? Eddings worked at Gearbox Software as the Vice President of Licensing and Partnerships before leaving the company in early 2017. 
This obviously left a gap in the voice of Claptrap, but I do credit the guy who's doing the voice in Borderlands 3 because it does sound pretty on point. But Eddings himself did not opt to return, leaving many fans to ask why. According to Eddings, Pitchford assaulted him in the lobby of the Marriott Marquis at Games Done Quick 2017. By this point, I was just about done hearing about Pitchford. Reading further into him paints the picture of a man in a position he has no business being in. He's incapable of taking criticism. I wouldn't blame him if it wasn't constructive criticism, but sometimes people are simply pulling him aside to point out glowing hypocrisy on his part. He's currently involved, or has been involved previously, in a number of cases, including but not limited to the accusation of embezzlement of funds from Gear Gearbox itself. He left a flash drive at a medieval times discovered to contain important Gearbox documents and one other document that I would rather not go into on my channel. Allegedly created the several sock puppet accounts to retweet fake positive feedback for Colonial Marines. As a personal note, I don't think that he did it himself, but I do believe that he is fully aware of it. Randy Pitchford has single-handedly ruined my perception of Gearbox software. Nothing to do with a few bad games, nothing to do with a misstep or two, just Randy Pitchford. If I were working under this man, I would be utterly embarrassed to be associated with someone who shows so little self-control when the chips are down. As the CEO, this man should have some humility. At no point do I think that he needs to censor himself, and he's well within his rights to block anybody he wants on social media. I'm of the opinion that people in positions like that, or developers in general, don't have to put up with gamer shit if they start mouthing off to them. But with the amount of crap that seems to follow Pitchford around, I can safely say that I would never want to support Gearbox as long as he's in the big chair. The point of this video was not simply to bash or insult Randy Pitchford. The point was to say that after reading as much information as I could, I've decided that I don't want to support this company any further and I'll not be buying any Gearbox products in the future, either until Pitchford is no longer CEO or shows a serious change in attitude that's reflected in his behaviour and representation of his company, his team, and the products that he is trying to sell. And that is all I've got to say. I, I tell you, I've watched- <laughs> Bring the in the, bring in the no, setup. No, I've no. Watched, I, there was one video somebody did online where they're like, they, they did the comparison. It was like, it was fucking stupid shit.